So what does the key property? Okay, so um, first, I guess we saw that uh, the labor supply is increasing in theta. Okay, so what is what's going on here? Well, when the labor market tightness is higher, so there are many vacancies per unemployed workers, it's easier to find a job for a worker, and as a result, um, through the matching process, there are just more workers who end up with a job uh, you know, when the flows are balanced. So our labor supply is always an increasing function of tightness. Uh, Another property we saw is that if the tightness is zero, the labor supply is zero. So if there are just no vacant jobs, then you know nobody can find a job. So nobody will have a job, the labor supply is zero. Another property that's important to also remember is that the labor supply is less than uh, the size of the labor force, of course. No, not more people than uh, the number one in the labor force can find a job. And we also saw that the limit when the tightness was going to infinity of the labor supply is equal to the size of the labor force. So if you had infinitely many vacancies, everybody could find a job uh, and there would be no, uh, no unemployment. Um, so I think these are, uh, these are the key properties that I would um, keep in mind, and of course, something that's also important to keep in mind is the assumption we made to derive that labor supply, that labor market flows are balanced. The last thing we can do, just to wrap up this uh, discussion of the labor supply, is to do uh, what we call comparative statics. Uh, so what are comparative statics in macro? Well, comparative statics are when we study the property of um, objects, you know, either uh, supply curve, demand curve, or equilibrium when we change the value of a parameter. Okay? Um, so here, we can do a couple of comparative statics with the labor supply. So what are parameters that are involved here? So one parameter that's involved is the job separation rate. So you remember that the labor supply that we just derived is f of theta divided by s plus f of theta times h. Okay. So one comparative static we can do is what happens if S goes up. Okay, uh, so basically, um, here I'm asking you suddenly um, there are more people who lose their job. There's just more separation. What can we expect for the labor supply? Another uh, comparative static we could do is what happens if, say, H goes up. Okay, so H is another parameter of the model. So imagine that suddenly more people enter the, uh, the labor force. What can we expect for the labor supply? Uh, so these are two uh, comparative static. And we can see the result by looking at our function here. You can see that if um, H here goes up, clearly the whole of the labor supply is going to go up. So we can expect that the labor supply function will be higher if h goes up. You can see that s here is in the denominator, so the opposite will happen. If s goes up, there are more job separation, we can expect the labor supply to actually <coughs> um, decrease for any amount, of, uh, or, or any amount of tightness. So if there are more job separation, people will keep their job for a smaller amount of time, and you expect fewer people to hold jobs at any point in time. Um, and so, if S goes up, what we may, what we expect is that the labor supply <coughs> is going to drop. If H goes up, the opposite. We expect the labor supply um, to increase. And in fact, it's very easy, 
you know, to represent that graphically. Um, so let's just do it to uh, work with that. Um, so let's again represent our Let's again I'll represent our labor market uh, diagram. So here we have tightness on the y-axis, employment on the x-axis. Let's represent here just a baseline labor supply. Okay, um, and so let's first look at what happens if S goes up. Is there is a higher um, Sorry, and I can also represent actually at the size of the labor force here. Right, so what happens if S goes up? We'll have a new labor supply, and in fact, what we can show, we've demonstrated, the labor supply will be less for any amount of tightness. So basically, your labor supply will shift inside like this to a new labor supply. That's if uh, that's what happens if our labor if our job separation rate goes up. So we can expect a shift like this. Uh, now we can ask what happens if uh, what happens if H the size of the labor force uh, goes up. Well, so here if H goes up, we know that this is going to shift out something like this to some new edge here and as a result that's going to drive all our labor supply curve out something like this so this is a new labor supply if we have a higher um, if we have a higher labor force so under that higher labor force you know this old labor force would just disappear and it would just move to a higher level like this Okay, so that, that's what you would see. So you can represent very easily this comparative statics.